Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am very excited. Like, uh, I just watched the in-flight uh, short from Gen Con, and I'm excited to be reading this announcement article for a new expansion for Arkham Horror the Card Game, A Feast Fatality. of Hemlock. So it's The Feast of Hemlock Vale is the expansion. We're going to be having a player card and an investigator expansion, and we actually have dates now. And there's a bunch of cards and information in this, so let's read through it together. I'm going to be reading uh, for the first time here for all of you and for also myself. Lecourt, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime subscription. Welcome to the Golden Table. Let's get this thing going. All right, so the Feast of Hemlock Vale. I love it. I love it. Uh, so, investigators, we have three old ones. Wilson, Hank, and Kate, and two new ones. I love it. I love it. All right. When renowned bot botanist Dr. Rosa Marquez receives a strange sample from the secluded and mysterious Hemlock Isle, her instincts tell her that something is amiss. Following the recommendation of an old colleague, Dr. Marquez invites her investigators to accompany her on a survey of the island. Nothing can prepare them for what they find there. Deadly mutated wildlife and a strange malignant presence permeate the enigmatic isle, all while the local residents prepare for a festival seemingly unaware of the danger. So we get like Midsummer, we get Wicker Man vibes here, two really good like cult horror uh, pieces. Uh, so that's awesome. The investigators only have three days to find out what lurks beneath the Hemlock Veil before it's too late. I remember ages ago, uh, Duke alluded that this was like Majora's Mask to Orcarina of Time, uh, to like Scarlet Keys to now. And yeah, like the three days I think is really cool. Uh, and you get really feel that vibe there. Fantasy Flight Games is thrilled to announce the Feast of Hemlock Vale, a pair of brand new expansions for Arkham Horror the Card Game. This pair of separate but related expansions sees our intrepid investigators delving into a fast-paced mystery. Five new investigators from the Feast of Hemlock Vale investigator expansion have limited time to stop whatever it is that is happening at Hemlock Isle, a tale that unfolds within the Feast of Hemlock Vale campaign expansion. Just like with the previous two waves, The Edge of the Earth and the Scarlet Keys, you'll only find player cards in the Investigator expansion while the scenarios in the Campaign expansion. Whether you want one expansion or both, you won't miss out on this latest batch of Arkham Horror goodness. Oh. I love some Arkham Horror goodness. Hell yeah. Uh, let's go! Alright, so we got an image. There's Hank and Kate being pulled in. They're worshipping a tree. The tree's got evil faces on it. Uh, you love to see it. You love to see it. Okay. An appetite for danger. Nast naturally, the Feast of Hemlock Vale Investigator expansion provides a whole pile of new player cards for the game, including five new investigators. Um, one of these is Kate Winthrop. Winthrop. Oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, brilliant. All right, so let's read her card. Hey, Charby, how's it going? 16 months at the Golden Table. Sorry I can't spend too long on the, the call-outs, but I'm just uh, I'm in the flow right now. All right, so 2424. Four. You begin the game with Flux Stabilizer and Active Side Face Up. As a lightning bolt, move a clue from Kate Winthrop to a Science or Tool Lassie Control with no clues on it. Forced, when Lassie Control with a clue on it leaves play, place its clue on your location. Okay. Uh, Elder Sign Effect, uh, plus zero, you may move one clue from an Lassie Control back to Kate Winthrop. So the Forced Effect is, like, kind of not even here, right? Um, but it's, yeah, probably not even here. Um... Move a clue to an asset with on. That's a great question. Can you the the do you, can you spend the clues on your assets as if they were in under your control? I'd be curious to find out. All right. So brilliant scientist, the university Kate comes in a seeker investigator and wields an incredible invention as her signature asset, the flux stabilizer. Beginning the game on its inactive side, Kate needs only to move one of her clues on the device to power it, flip it up to its active side. Doing so also grants her access to two powerful events, which we will get to. Either of which can access Kate in dealing with monsters. All right, Flux Stabilizer. After clues placed on Flux Stabilizer, search your bonded cards or just got a pile for one copy of Etheric Current and shuffle it into your deck. Flip a sta uh, uh, Flux Stabilizer, keeping all tokens and attachments. Okay. Permanent, Kate Winthrop deck only. When you place a clue on an ass you control, get plus two skill value for your next skill test this phase. Interesting. Okay, okay. And then we got these two, and she can go from Yuggeth or Yoth. All right, so Yuggeth, Bonded. Play only if it's on its active side. Fight. Move all clues on assets control to Kate Winthrop. For this attack, you may use book instead of fist. If you succeed and the attacked enemy is non-elite, you may exhaust it and move it to any location. Draw a card and flip flux stabilizer. So you may use book instead of fist. If you succeed the attacked enemy is non-elite, you may exhaust it and move it to any location. Draw a card. That's kind of fun. You can just like zap it 
It doesn't deal extra damage, but it does send the enemy across the universe. You send him through a portal into another dimension, which is kind of sick. And then we got Yoth. Um, uh, active side, evade. Move all clues on assets you control to Kate Winthrop. For this evasion attempt, you may use book instead of foot. If you succeed and the target is ev uh, of the evasion is non elite, shuffle it into the encounter deck, draw one card. Okay, cool. So, yeah, just like uh, zaps them to another dimension. Cool. You love to see it. And then we got some more cards. <clears throat> what the hell? <laughs> it's the it's an evil plant that is the unidentified card here. All right. Uh, so there's a there's a lot. Um, I'm gonna read the cards here. We're here. We might as well stop and read them. All right. Chemistry set. Two cost takes up the accessory slot. Uh, it's an item tool science. Action and exhaust chemistry set and investigate. If you fail by exactly two, discard chemistry set. If you succeed by exactly zero, gain two resources. If you succeed by exactly two, draw one card. If you succeed by exactly four, discover one additional clue at your location. Yep, lab coat time. It's time for the lab coat. So if we pull up lab coat, just to remind everyone what lab coat does. Let's do it. Because who would have thought that Kate Winthrop would have had synergy with her lab coat? I do think I do think Kate is the seeker rogue. I, I do think that is a good um, assessment there. Uh, when you would fail a skill test on a card by one or less exhaust, you succeed by zero instead. If you succeed by exactly zero, gain two resources. Seems kind of sick. Seems kind of sick. But my boy Barnaby? Now, Barnaby's something else now. Barnaby is not seeker rogue. Rest in peace, George Barnaby. All right, Ravenous Myconid. Uh, two costs, soaks for one and one, limit one per deck. Search your bonded cards for uncanny growth and add it to your hands. So we don't know what that does yet. And as an action, if it has three or more growth on it, move each growth on it to your resource pool as resources. Record in your campaign log that you've classified a new species. Oh yeah, this is just giant plant humongous. The Aether Currents events are the only thing the flux, flux Stabilizer is useful for. It's useful for. On its active side, the Stabilizer can grant a stacking plus two bonus on the next skill test she performs each time she moves a clue onto an asset she controls. So it's pretty simple. I know there's uh, someone in chat saying that this is complicated, but it actually is quite simple. You're basically moving your clues onto your flux stabilizer to get plus get an unexpected courage for a test. And each thing can have one clue on it. And the flux stabilizer on this side, it's just on an assy control. So you basically are using clues to get unexpected courages. I don't think that's that complicated. All right. Um, cards like Chemistry Set and Microscope. Microscope, this is the one that we saw. So two cost, hand slot. After an, an enemy location successfully evaded or defeated exhaust microscope, place a resource on microscope as evidence. Uh, double action, investigate. You get plus one book for this investigation for each evidence on microscope, max plus three book. If you succeed, spend up to two evidence to discover that many additional clues. Okay. I do, yeah... The, Kate Winthrop has got to be Seeker Rogue, right? She's got to be the 0502. It just, it screams 0502, right? It, it just screams it. All right. Can Nate grab some extra clues or cards while the overeager Dr. Charles West can help her carry all the tools? All right, let's see this guy. Oh, God. Do not, if this guy is your doctor, uh, don't go to him. Go find a different doctor. All right, three cost knows his purpose. Dr. Charles West III. He takes up the ally slot. You have additional hand slot, which can only be used to hold a tool asset. After you successfully investigate by exactly one or three, exhaust Dr. Charles West to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Um, I mean, I think it's certainly fun. <laughs> uh, but he, he has that yellow thing where I don't think he beats the um, Dr. Milan thing, but he does. See, I love the art. I, I think the card's cool. He also holds your mag glass. He does hold your mag glass for you while he's cutting up another uh, big squid here. An internet emergency. Did I miss anything? Uh, how long was your internet emergency? <laughs> that can help me answer this question. All right. All right. So we got the ravenous myconid who we've already seen. The ravenous myconid, in addition to being another science asset uh, for her to place a clue on, also works in tandem with uncanny growth. All right, so bonded, one cost, investigate. After this test resolves, place one resource on Ravenous Myconid as a growth for each point you succeed by. Set Uncanny Growth aside out of play. If you fail, return Uncanny Growth to your hand. Interesting. And you can grab them with extra actions. So the idea is that you want, um, um, you want to do this. 
Yeah, there is a lot of synergy with the section tools here too, for sure. You can do this. If you don't succeed by three, you can grab that again. Interesting. Okay. You want it? Yeah, no, she's, she is green, yellow. There's like no, I, it's, it just screams the archetype, right? Okay. I'm also unlocking some powerful uh, research upgrades versions later on. If this isn't enough, well-funded. Uh, was skill? Wild. While you control a science or tool asset, well-funded gains? Question mark. So another while. While you control three or more, it gains... Okay, so that's just that's just a good scaling card. It's a fortune as well. Nice. Uh, there's a skill card that goes in more powerful. Uh, Kate's devices are powerful and endlessly useful. She must be con uh, careful not to conduct a failed experiment or the results may end up horrifying. Test brain three. Gets plus one difficulty for each asset control with a clue on it. For each point you fail by, you must either take a horror or place one of your clues on your location. She gets her own uh, rotting remains. Fortune means no wrecks. That's actually really funny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she only has two brain, which once again screams rogue, doesn't it? And um, yeah. Is that the first investigator weakness that makes a test on a card? Interesting. It could be. I can't think of another one. That's cool, though. I love it. All right, Hank Sampson. My boy! Uh, what? <laughs> three, one, five, three. Uh, he soaks for five and five. What the fuck? What the fuck? All right. This is interesting. I haven't seen anything else, but just read it. You may be assigned damage or horror dealt to ally assets or other investigators at your location. When you would be defeated by damage and or horror, instead heal all your damage and horror and swap this card with its bonded or resolute version either side face up. So we got Lazarus from the Binding of Isaac. All right. Another of the new investigators in this expansion is Hank Sampson. This humble farmhand steps into play as a survivor investigator with a very unique ability. When another investigator or an ally would be able to damage or uh, horror at Hank's location, he can choose to be assigned the damage or horror uh, instead. Then if he would be defeated, instead he heals all of his damage and horror and swaps to one of the two new resolute versions of himself. The Assistant or the Warden. So the Assistant is 3344, bonded Hank Sampson. You cannot be healed. You, uh, you may be assigned damage or horror dealt to other ally and assets... Uh, other ally assets or other investigators your location. When one or more horror is placed on you, you draw a card. So Elder Sign plus one, move one horror from Hank Sampson to an asset you control. Yeah, Elder Sign effect is just plus one, baby. And then we got Warden, which is you cannot be healed. You may be assigned damage or horror dealt to other ally assets or your location. When one or more damage is placed on you, gain two resources. And he becomes a four, one, six? Six fist? Three, three, four, 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 one, six, three. Six? <laughs> oh. I mean, you do need to take, like, five damage, five horror to get there. So, like, it, it's, like, the idea is that it scales with the game. Um, That's wild. What an interesting design that I don't think anyone saw coming for Hank. I think that's a really cool design. So each version of Resident Hank powers up his stats to impressive levels, but this comes at the cost of being unable to heal damage or horror. Damage or horror can still be moved from him, though, which works well with the signature event Stout Hearted. Um, Stout Hearted. Hank Sampson deck only. Two co there's like, there's my paw. <laughs> Hank Sampson deck only. Fast play when you engage a non elite enemy. Move up to do damage on a horror from Hank Sampson to that enemy is damaged. That's a powerful event. That's really cool. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Which, where's par? <laughs> Not par. Which lets him move damage or horror to an enemy he engages to keep himself on the board as long as possible. However, signature weakness, where's par? The Feast of Hemlock Vale, 18, causes an enemy to deal direct horror to Hank, making it difficult for him to protect others until he manages to chase the enemy down. Oh, God. Where's Par? All right, discard cards to the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded. Attach where's Par to it. Spawn it at a connected location if able. Attached enemy gains elusive. Elusive? Elusive. At the end of the round, Hank Sampton takes one direct horror. elusive 
We got a new keyword, baby. Interesting. Yeah, maybe. Oh, elusive is like probably reverse hunter, right? It moves a space away from you. Yeah, probably, right? It disengages and moves away. Yeah. So they managed to chase that enemy down. A hundred percent. All right. Okay. Whew. Let's keep this going. Pitchfork. We saw this one in the uh, thing. This is a really cool... Um, this is a really cool thing here. Uh, really cool asset. Three cost, item tool, weapon, melee. Takes up both hand slots. It's survivor, action, fight. You get plus one fist and deal plus two damage for this attack. If this attack is successful, lose control of Pitchfork and attach your location. Location gains. Take control of Pitchfork. Pitchfork. Any investigator at Pitchfork's location may trigger this ability. That That is so flavorful. This is kind of um, the shit that... Uh, it was like, it's like baseball bat. Like, this is like the survivor, um, flavor, right? Like, this is like such a cool idea for a weapon, you know? It should be attached to the enemy. No, the enemy pulls itself out. I understand, like, why, like, flavorfully it works to, like, attach the enemy. But, I mean, like, if you ain't killing an enemy with three damage, it's like, it's like the corpse is still there, you know? It's really cool. It's really cool. And it's like, it's a very good... The rate on it is really good. All right, then we got push to the limit. Two costs. Choose a weapon or tool asset in your discard pile. Resolve an action ability on that asset, ignoring all of its cost, including its action cost. After this effect resolves, shuffle the chosen asset into your deck. Playing this card does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So we got a knowledge as power. Um, we have a knowledge as power, but survivor style. Three damage on a zero XP weapon makes me afraid. Uh, I mean, it's a two action attack, right? Reload the bow in your discard. Let's go! <laughs> yeah, it still costs an action. Yeah, we did just have that with uh, Sledgehammer. And Sledgehammer didn't change things. Cool cards. And takes up both hand slots too, which I think now we know with Sledgehammer, this is a rate that's pretty standard for two hands in a red. All right. And we haven't even got to the expansion. We still have cards to look at. Hank's versatility and support of his allies is only enhanced by the new survivor cards in this expansion. He can take advantage of this with a, th a skill to throw a fitch fork at enemies, which other investigators can grab and use themselves. With long shot, Hank can deal an extra bit of damage during a fight or evasion test that he or nearby investigators are performing. All right. Practiced. Just throwing a fucking brick at this enemy's head. Let's go. We got a new stunning blow. Snake getting hit. But now it's fucking ghoul getting hit with a brick in the head. Let's go. You can make commit long start to a fight or evasion test in an enemy or location uh, or connecting location. If this test is successful, deal one damage to that enemy. Seems pretty good. It's red vicious blow, right? You just don't get the fist out of it. I think that's cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah, the no icons kind of sucks, but it does feel very survivor because of that, right? It's Vicious Blow. I think that's cool. Vicious Blow without the pip, I think, is a good way to not, like, basically just ruin Vicious Blow, right? Yeah, I think uh, as long as... um. You're at the same location, you can, uh, someone else, I don't know. You, I think there's no reason why, as long as you're not also committing the vicious blow, unless of course you do the whole practice makes perfect thing, but let's not worry about that. All right. Uh, Hank can push it to the limit, which we've already seen, push to the limit, and then uh, to get one more use out of it before shuffling it back into his deck, the Sparrow Mask can grant Hank a bonus to his willpowerful agility and replenish itself whenever he takes damage or horror, which will be doing a lot as he protects his allies. <laughs> Sparrow Mask. Uh, one cost, uh, item charm mask. Uh, let's go Amina. Uh, limit one mask per investigator. Hey, they have that text back. That's kind of fun. Uh, uses two offerings or punish one of these offerings. You have to take one more damage or horror. Spend an offering. You get plus two brain or plus two fist for, uh, for foot. Sorry, for the skill test. That's cool. Uh, nice and simple. I don't think it's like, uh, it seems fun though. I like it. I think it's kind of fun. 
Takes up the face slot, face slot, exactly. Yeah, good defensive card, definitely. Slotless as well. Yeah, it's slotless. Mask slot, yes. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, well, wrong place, right time. Can keep him as healthy as long as possible, easily after swapping to one of his resolute forms. Wrong place, right time. I love this art. Zero cost, commits for... Oh, killer symbols. Uh, this is a cost to play, uh, play. It's a double. Okay, spirit double. Spend an action. So it's a two actions to play it. Move up to five damage on a horror from your, your investigator to assets controlled by investigators your location. For each asset defeated by this effect, draw one card. Remove wrong place, right time from the game. Interesting. I think the effect is, like, fine. Um... But I think, like, it's, it's, um, it's, like, if you're going to be niche, right? It's going to be one of the, you could put it in, a, yeah, it's an April Fool's deck for sure. But I think what it is, kind of what it's giving me as well is just, like, um, yeah, like, Tommy would love this card. Like, it's, like, for tanks, right? It's specifically for tanks. Cool, I like it. Uh, keep him as healthy as long as possible. Uh, while Hank may not be much of a, ta a talker, his decent player means he can always try to stall for time in a pinch. Hey, Patrice is back, baby. One cost, tactic, trick, parlay. Choose an enemy location, test brain X, where X is the chosen enemy's fight or evade value, whichever is lower. Uh, if you succeed, exhaust the chosen enemy. If it is non-elite, oh, but do not disengage from it. Reminder text! Reminder text! Let's go! If it is non-elite, it is not ready during the next upkeep phase. If you fail, return stall to time to your hand. Whoa! That seems like a good card. I, I dig it. Honestly, I like all the cards here. Um, and there's, like, the mechanics are also, there's no customizable here, which I know there's, it was very contentious. All the stuff is really good. Awesome. Love it. All right, now let's get to the uh, campaign expansion. <clears throat> Whether or not you decide to pick up the Investigator expansion, you can still look forward to a thrilling new adventure in the Feast of Hemlock Vale campaign expansion. Spooky tree face. We love tree face. The story of Feast of Hemlock Vale begins with an invitation from Dr. Rosa Marquez, the Feast of Hemlock Vale companion, uh, who asks you to, and your fellow investigators, accompany her to the mysterious Hemlock Isle, where strange things have been happening to the environment and wildlife. At the same time, the people of the local village of Hemlock Vale are preparing for a festival, a feast that for the first time has caused the once closed off island to open up visitors. Everyone is welcome, including you. Just don't go outside after dark. Things might turn things might turn out a bit grisly. Oh yeah, there's definitely Midsummer Wicker Man here. All right, best in her field. Four cost, takes up the ally slot. While I control her, you get plus one. Um, what? <laughs> plus one book and plus one foot. And after you discover the last clue, your location, uh, wingdings. Yeah, that's definitely going to be campaign related, right? We're going to be doing some campaign stuff there. All right, so that is, um, that's there for us to um, figure out once we get the book. All right, these cards are really cool. All right, you might have to do just that though in this case. So day one and then night one. So then like if things are going to be going, things are like the moon's fucking pissed. The great art on these. Uh, in which we welcome new friends. So yeah, in which we, this gives me, like, this is like pretty much like, it feels very midsummer for these. I love this. In which the forest comes alive with many creatures, great and small. Oh, it's so cool. You might have to do just that though. In this campaign, the story plays place over three days and three nights and your party must decide what to investigate on each of those days and nights. Okay, so it's a, are we assuming it's potentially a six part campaign? There are more areas than you will have time to survey during your stay on the island, and the events of the story will change depending on which... So, okay, with scenarios you choose to play. So it's uh, it's like open world, but uh, not, like, completely open. Right? Each scenario plays differently depending on which day and night you choose to play it, which already gives this campaign a ton of replayability, but it doesn't affect how I work here that will make your experience completely unique, the residents. I'd say eight parts, one for intro, three days, three nights, and one finale. I think that's also, that's a good guess, primary guy. I think that's also potentially true. 
Uh, hello, it's everybody. They're all here. And they all got, yeah, four wingding, six wingding omega, wingding seven. Interesting. I'm not going to read all these. The native night card's a one to four. Oh, good eye, Darkest Claptrap. Hemlock Vale is a living, breathing village, and you can build relations with these residents throughout the campaign. In a certain moments during or between scenarios, you may be called on to increase or decrease residents' relationship level, which naturally will affect how they interact with you later in the campaign. If your, your relationship level is good enough with someone, they may even become your ally during certain scenarios. On the flip side, if you offend someone or fail to nurture a bond with them, they may end up trying to hinder you instead. With so many residents and mysteries to contend with, you and your party will have your work cut out for you during this survey. Um, on our Arkham Horror, our Arkham Horror Cardium designers only get more ambitious with each wave. With so many different paths for each story to take, you'll want to revisit the tale of Feast of Hemlock Vale again and again. Get ready to survey Hemlock Isle with the Feast of uh, Hemlock Vale Investigator expansion and the campaign expansion. Release in January and February. Quarter one, 2024. <sighs> That's nice. That's sick. Really cool. I'm pretty damn excited. It, it is always scary to have like kind of like a more open world because like I do it. But, but I, all that said, I do think that the scenarios, I like the scenarios in Scarlet Keys a lot. Um, But I own this. Apparently the investigators are on the stores page. Give me the store page. Products. Shop. Do I have to go shop? No, probably not there. I have to find it the hard way. Um, it's just the text. Web store. Grandpa needs help. It was linked on the side of the page. Grandpa needs help, everybody. I mean, it's just their names. The names don't... Let's see. All right. Uh, brand new bonding cards that make use of bless and curse tokens. Bless and Curse Tokens are back? <clears throat> Alright. Uh, brand new Bond of Cards. So we got Wilson Richards. Using the right tool for the job as the handyman, Wilson Richards. Build the Ultimate Laboratory as Kate Winthrop. Um, Alessandra Zorzi is talk your smooth talk your way. We got a Parlay Rogue. Bring balance to the chaos as the folklorist Kohaku Naru uh, Narukami. Interesting. All right, so uh, yeah, so Wilson's gonna be our guardian. Kate's our our, our seeker. Alessandra is our rogue, uh, and uh, Kohaku is our mystic. They're gonna be in order. They're gonna be the order there. Yeah. So Wilson's guardian. Kate's seeker. Alessandra is definitely a parlay rogue, and uh, Kohaku is. Um... Oh, there's more on this page. Okay. Oh, photos of them. Are you kidding me? Let's crack the code. Just zoom in. All those folks there. All right, so Alessandra Zorzi, 4324. You may take additional action during turn, which can only be used to parlay. Uh, <clears throat> Elder Sound Effect, plus two. If you succeed, choose an online enemy or location, or a revealed connecting location, automatically evade that enemy. Uh, 4431. I love it. And then Wilson Richards, reduce the resource cost of the first tool as you play it each round by one. Three, 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 three. Triple three guardian. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, reduce the cost of the first re uh, first tool as you play each round by one. Yeah, easy. You get plus one skill on uh, skill value on on skill tests on tool assets. Easy. There's six people featured? I don't think that's true. One, two, three, four, five. They're making Wilson came out. Honestly, I, I kind of dig it. Cause, but like Wilson uh, Richards, um, I don't think he, he, 
he's tool focused in a different way. Like Kaimani has tools as their deck building, right? It's been long since we got a normal guardian. I just want a favorite fighter that shoots guns good. I mean, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but he has a gun. <laughs> but you can see there's a big there's gonna be a lot of tools in this expansion. The Mystic and the Rogue are new, yes. Fun. Okay. Consider me hyped. Um, I think it's very exciting um, that uh, Misty, yeah, Mystic's a four four three one. Is that we have um, a new like a like a new designer? Like I know that Duke's Stop. done previous stuff, but seeing um, no, totally thought the mirror was another person. I did too when I first saw the box, so <laughs> uh, I definitely get it. Because, uh, yeah, there's a little doll in it who has a face, I think, that's, like, looking down at us. Um, but um, a new lead designer can lead to really cool, exciting things. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. Uh, Ladat, thank you so much for eight months of the Golden Table. And with that, this has been the best day. This is so much uh, more than I was hoping for. So I'm actually, like, this was a lot of stuff to digest and talk about. And hopefully this means then that we're going to have a spoiler season start coming up again, which I think is going to be kind of really cool. Um, other than that, I'm going to say thanks for everybody who watched this video. Uh, I have a link to this announcement article in the YouTube description. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a good one. And as always, a GG's.